Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle reporting from Florida tonight. A flurry of new Trump nominations released today. One of his outside counsels, Todd Blanche, as his deputy attorney general. Former Congressman Doug Collins of Georgia for VA secretary. And former Missouri Solicitor General John Sauer as SG Solicitor General of the United States. But first, consider the source. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, we knew it was coming. Speaking of new picks, Trump picks RFK Jr. to head the Department of Health and Human Services. And this only adds to the number of heads blowing off the shoulders of official Washington tonight. Now, the effort to discredit the RFK Jr. nomination has been underway ever since he endorsed Trump back in August. A Vox headline, Trump really could empower RFK Jr. to wreck public health. From the New Republic, Trump officially gives RFK Jr. Ch a chance to destroy the country's health. And my personal favorite, from the Arizona Public Health Association, why RFK as HHS secretary could mean the end of evidence-based public health policy. Okay, evidence-based health? How about this evidence? A record number of Americans are suffering from chronic illnesses. One in six adults now has diabetes. And by 2050, given current trends, about 61% of adults are predicted to develop cardiovascular disease. So RFK understands this is a ticking time bomb for our families, for our hospitals, our doctors, our nurses, our local, state, and federal budgets. And all of this is happening, by the way, as we're spending more on health care than ever before. Now, in 2022, when we have good, uh, good numbers, we spent $4.5 trillion, or $13,493 per person on health care. That's more than any developed nation, but without any better results. So, speaking of evidence, logic would indicate that what we've been doing isn't working. And if so facto, we need a fresh perspective before we as a people get even sicker. But more fury and fear over the RFK nomination in a few moments. But one thing, again, we do know conclusively. The gatekeepers of the bureaucracy, whether it's at HHS or anywhere else, and those who get rich from the status quo in D.C., are always going to be threatened by anyone demanding accountability. And this explains a lot of the frenzy over Trump's recent cabinet picks. Tulsi Gabbard, as director of national intelligence, you think Trump had given it to Putin himself. We're bringing in Russia's influence is what this is. We have people like Tulsi Gabbard who are spreading Kremlin talking points. He's a, uh, an admirer both of um, Bashar Assad of Syria and an apologist for uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia. Tulsi Gabbard has a long history of uh, siding with uh, the analysis of Russian state propaganda, Syrian state propaganda. I mean, you just, just they, they can't help themselves. Oh, Pete Hegseth at DOD? The MIC, military industrial complex, has gone to DEFCON 1 over this pick. Pete Hegseth, uh, inarguably, um, is not qualified for the position. This idea that you can exclude women from combat is really one that shows his lack of experience and really, you know, him, him being unqualified to be uh, the Secretary of Defense. He is the most unqualified candidate for this position in the history of America. This is very dangerous. <laughs> Matt Gates's nomination as AG? Well, of course, that's already in serious trouble. Some even speculating that the nominee himself knew all along it'd be a long shot. I mean, who knows? A House ethics report on Gates was ready to be released on Friday, but since he resigned, well, the committee loses jurisdiction over the matter. Still, Tricky Dick Durbin sees an opening to hurt Trump by forcing the report's release to the Senate, where, if passed as prologue, we can all be assured that that contents is sure going to leak. Trump's team had to know what the Hill reaction would this, to this would actually be. A Republican friend of mine, who's also friends with Matt Gates, told me last night he thought this appointment was the worst thing that's ever happened to the country. This is the first step, likely, in Trump's revenge tour against the Department of Justice. He is the, the exhibit A to weaponization. I mean, we are in pure George Orwell, 1984 land. Thank you, Andrew. 
Of course, we can't predict what's going to happen or if this is a way to force the Senate to accept recess appointments. But incoming Senate Majority Leader John Thune is leaving all options on the table. And I always believe that you defer to a president when it comes to the people they want in their, in their cabinet and to do a lot of these important jobs. Uh, but obviously there is a process whereby we get down and, and uh, scrub all these nominees and figure out whether or not, one, they're qualified and, and are they people who are fit to hold these offices. Well, I certainly hope that as they carry out their advice and consent role, Republican senators remember that Donald Trump is the reason they even have a majority. And as Republicans fight amongst themselves, perhaps Democrats plan to use every avenue to block Trump, even forming, and they're admitting this, a shadow cabinet. We can't let Donald Trump's extreme MAGA agenda go unanswered or unopposed. Zone defense isn't going to work. We're going to have to go man on man. We need to borrow from our British friends and appoint a shadow cabinet to fight back against the worst abuses of a second Trump administration. A team from the opposition that mirrors the government's own cabinet members. They watch the cabinet closely, publicly challenging, scrutinizing, and offering new ideas. It's another form of checks and balances. A quiet guardrail that holds those in power accountable. Wait, wait, it's another form of checks and balances. Was that in the Constitution? I must have missed that. I love when they bring their props, by the way. So this makes it even more critical for President Trump to have all his ducks in a row on the Hill before making big appointments. He's always been more effective that way. There's no time to waste. While all this plays out, we should also consider the source or sources of this incoming stream of criticism. I mean, these people have been wrong about pretty much everything, propping up Biden's terrible cabinet picks just because they were first, first this or first that, of course, with the help of their friends in the press. President-elect Joe Biden announcing historic picks for top posts in his cabinet, including former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen to be the uh, country's first woman Treasury Secretary. Joe Biden's cabinet nominees look like America, quite frankly. Diversity in thought, diversity in race, in gender, in everything. That is what America looks like. Joe Biden has appointed the most diverse cabinet in history. That's all that mattered. Forget qualifications, but that made them qualified because they were diverse. Made no sense. By the way, what did Mayor Pete do to qualify himself to run the Department of Transportation? Mayor of South Bend? Really? What about Alejandro Mayorkas? His qualifications gave an invasion of illegal aliens to America. The message is quite clear. Do not come. Uh, the border is closed. The border is secure. But even their credentials, credentialed picks were like former federal judge Merrick Garland. When they weren't working on ways to harass Trump, they were catering to BLM extremists. The top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. Oh, I forgot. That was a golden oldie. And, of course, we can't forget Biden's whiz-bang economic expert, Janet Yellen. We've had several months of high inflation that um, most economists, including me, believe will be transitory. Transitory, still with us, writing, still writing articles about inflation today. Over the past few years, Donald Trump was very clear that he wanted to finish the job he started in his first term. He intends to drain the swamp and restore trust and accountability in Washington. Now, this won't be easy. The Washington bureaucracy has been around a lot longer than any of the committed smart patriots committed to undoing it. The establishment may have lost this last election to MAGA Republicans, but it's still well-funded, and it's still committed to surviving even the reform efforts of Elon Musk. Strategic thinking, strong nominees, and well-placed allies on the Hill will make all the difference. The momentum is Trump's to lose or use for phenomenal achievement. As for the relentless criticism, always consider the source. And that's the angle.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.